On January 11th, all U.S. flights were grounded after an FAA database outage. It's the first time U.S. airspace has been shut down since 9-11. And the travel nightmare comes just weeks after Southwest Airlines canceled thousands of flights due to weather and staffing. William J. McGee is the Senior Fellow for Aviation at the American Economic Liberties Project. Bill, welcome to the program. Thanks very much for having me on. Can you give us some details on what caused that recent FAA database outage? Yes, uh, it, what, what it affected was a system called NOTAMS. Uh, and, and what that is, is that's notice to uh, everyone that works in aviation, pilots, dispatchers, et cetera. It can, it can, it's a critical system that's, uh, that affects safety. And uh, it failed during the uh, midnight hours, thankfully during the midnight hours. If it had failed at four o'clock in the afternoon, it would have been a, a much worse uh, situation. But it, it really points out how brittle our systems are. And it points out also how um, the Federal Aviation Administration, which operates the NOTAM system and operates the nation's air traffic control network, has been underfunded and understaffed for that matter, uh, not for years, but for decades. Uh, and that goes across multiple administrations, both parties. We have a real crisis with the FAA. It just year in and year out when the budgets are set, there are not enough FAA safety inspectors. There's not enough money and, and care being put into uh, the IT systems. And uh, with air traffic control, we've been for more than 20 years now trying to upgrade the system so that it matches other countries with satellite-based technology. And, and, and Bill, but before, we, we, before we talk about the technology, I want to go back to what you said about being underfunded. Why do you think that is, I mean, given how important air traffic control is, obviously, to safety and to the economy, um, given that, you know, as you said, there's not enough money for IT upgrades for, for more air traffic controllers? It's a great question. And I've been uh, around this industry for a long time. I started working in the airlines in 1985. I'm an FAA licensed aircraft dispatcher. I worked for airlines dispatching flights and interacting with air traffic control. Um, we have not had enough safety inspectors. As, we, as was made painfully clear with the Boeing 737 MAX uh, incident. We, have no, we do not have enough safety inspectors to visit all the airlines and visit all the, the maintenance repair stations. And this is something that year in and year out. It, politically, is it not sexy enough to put you know, more money in the budget for something like this? Also, I think there's a mindset that luckily the, the, the safety record has been very good lately and knock wood, let's hope it stays that way. But I think, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's a sense of resting on the laurels and saying, well, there hasn't been a problem, so therefore things must be working. That's not how a safety net works. And when you, when you talk to real safety experts, they'll tell you, you have to make investments to ensure that we keep up the safety record that we have. You know, in a recent article, you write that the U.S. badly needs to use the next generation air transportation system. What is it and how is it different from the current system we have right now? Sure. In many nations in the world, they've made a full transition to uh, satellite-based technology. We have this sort of piecemeal system of technologies, in some cases satellite-based, in some cases it's still ground-based as it was many years ago. Um, the bottom line is NextGen has been kicking around for about 20 years now, and we just haven't gotten everything together on the funding. Look, there's no one in the industry, in government or in the airlines or, or anyone that knows anything about aviation that doesn't think it's the right thing to go fully to next gen. It's for safety, for efficiency, for cost savings. It makes all the sense in the world. But where the problem has come is who's going to pay for it? And the airlines are going to have to do their part as well because they have to invest in technology on board their aircraft to, to upgrade to satellite-based systems. And uh, in the past, they have balked at that. And uh, airlines are obviously going to not want increased costs to themselves. They're not going to want increased regulation. So what's the solution, Bill? Well, the bottom line is this is just way too critical to the entire country, as you said. I mean, look, we, we are on the hook as taxpayers whenever there's a problem with the airline industry. The airlines received a $54 billion bailout during COVID. That was the most of any industry. And when the when the executives came to Congress asking for that money, they we agree with what they said. They said that, um, you know, they're intrinsic to the nation's economy and security. Well, if that's the case, then let's not be constantly uh, socializing the losses and privatizing the profits. We all need a stake in this. 
That's why at American Economic Liberties Project, we're recommending that something called federal preemption be eliminated. I was just going to ask you about that. What does that mean? Sure. It's an arcane rule that came in in 1978 when the airline industry was deregulated by President Carter. And basically it says that only Congress and the DOT will have oversight of the airline industry. Well, what we've seen, and this was made clear by the Southwest event during the holidays, the largest single airline meltdown in history, the DOT has been an extremely ineffective regulator, not just currently under Secretary Buttigieg, but going back multiple secretaries, decades in fact. The DOT has not cracked down on the airlines. They've allowed them to get away with awful behavior, sitting on $10 billion of refunds for years, not uh, not addressing this crisis with airline flight cancellations, scheduling flights they can't operate. We're saying if the DOT is not going to be an effective regulator, and it hasn't been, then we need to allow state courts, state attorneys general, state legislatures to step in and do what the DOT isn't. And as, when you an, say, as an American what, citizen, you have fewer rights dealing with an airline than you do with virtually any other industry. But you when you say, Bill, the, the, yeah. the Department of Transportation needs to crack down on airlines, what does that look like? What do you mean crack down? What do they need to do? Sure. We had a crisis. Senator Markey said that in 2020, there was $10 billion in refunds not paid by airlines. By far, the worst offender was United Airlines, which had more than 10,000 complaints filed with the DOT. It was clear in 2020, airlines were not paying refunds. What did the DOT do? It took almost three years for an investigation. And then they find Frontier and five smaller foreign airlines. All of those airlines deserve to be fined, but there was no punishment whatsoever for the largest offenders, for United, American, Delta, Southwest. This is not effective oversight of this industry. All right, the airlines Bill. know they can get away with it, and they do. And we're out of time. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.